This is today's project and as it says on the label it accepts DC from 15 to a massive 72 volts and it outputs a constant 12 volts at up to 1.5 amps and I can hear you saying why would I want to do that? The reason I've bought a couple of these is because I have amplifiers need a, an, an HT rail of between 45 and say 65 volts and it's quite common that you'd need a 12 volt supply nowhere near possibly one and a half amps but even if it's just 10 or 15 milliamps and it means either a separate transformer or some kind of transformer or converter you can use it with virtually any voltage and I've found providing you've got well it works down to about 14 volts so but if you've got 14 volts you'd probably just drop those two volts with a simple regulator or if, it, if it's a fixed current you could just put a resistor in there Imagine if you wanted to use a fan to, con to cool you the, the equipment. Most fans run on 12 volts, so we've got the right amount of voltage and a fan's typically going to consume about 100 milliamps. So whatever your HT is, you can just connect this to it and because its power draw is, well the efficiency is about 90 percent so we're going to have a look at this on the bench in a minute i've actually got about five different projects on the bench so before i dare show you the bench i'm going to have a little clear up and probably a coffee as well unfortunately there's no neat way to show you this but <laughs> if you can make head nor tail of this this is the power supply i'm going to use and it will it's variable from 0 volts up to 61 volts at 5 amps. So the power is going to come along here and we're feeding the input here of the test module and I'm loading it at the moment with this 8 ohm load which will draw approximately well just under one and a half amps with a 12 volt supply. So we're going to load the module virtually to its maximum. We don't need to look at the module for this test, unless of course it bursts into flames, so um, in which case I'll, you, I'm sure you'll see the smoke. But I've got this meter set up to read current, DC current, and that's in series with the load that at the A the 8 ohm load that I've just shown you and you'll see the scale here of the current it's drawing. This meter is set up to read voltage. I'm on the 20 volts DC scale and that's literally across the output so we'll actually be able to see what the output voltage is. And off camera because I can't put all this in one go um, there will be the variable DC power supply and I will read off the incoming volts as things happen. Right, the power is on and you can see on this meter we're drawing 1.46 amps and this is the output voltage at 11.84. A little bit off 12 volts, not a significant amount. Now that's with 20 volts going into the module. So I'm going to turn the voltage up now on the input and we've now got 30 volts going in. The current is much the same. The actual output voltage ironically is dropping slightly but still not an issue. 
Right, we're going to go up now to 40 volts, and that's 40 volts. And again, you can see the current and voltage. And now we're going to go all the way up to the maximum I can do on this, which is 62 volts. And again, the stability is much the same. Is this getting hot? I've left it on now just under one and a half amps. My load box is nice and toasty, almost too hot to touch. But the module, it just feels slightly warm to touch predominantly at this end. But as I would imagine you would mount this to something metal, I think that slight rise isn't going to make any difference at all. Can't show you inside sadly because it's potted. And as I bought this for my own money to actually use, I don't propose to destroy it just to make a video. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm going to show you a practical application for this rather than just heating up resistors, which is not really a typical application. I've got a 12 volt fan here and I've chosen this one ironically because it's a bit noisy so you'll be able to hear the speed variation well hopefully there won't be any speed variation but if there is you'll be able to hear it so I'm going to throw the power switch on the meter now on the power supply and I'm going to start off with 60 volts now Obviously, if this module wasn't working, this would burst into flames at this stage. Right, you can hear the fan and it's receiving this voltage. And it's drawing that current, which is 114 milliamps at 12 volts. The funny thing is, you'll notice this is still not exactly 12 volts. And the voltage does go down as I should say the, yes the output voltage does go down when you put up the input voltage which is a little bit strange I wasn't expecting that now what's beeping I think it's probably the meter because I haven't done anything to it and that should make it happy now so I'm going to turn the voltage down now and you'll see all these numbers should stay the same. Quite a big drop, we're going to go down to 30 volts and you'll notice the voltage to the fan has actually gone up a fraction and if we continue to go down, we go down to 15 volts and again slight rise current obviously isn't going to rise other than by the slight increment because the voltage has gone up and as I continue to turn the voltage down the fan will start to slow there you are that's the input voltage and clearly as it's not a, a boost converter it can't make the voltage higher than the input voltage and there's always that one and a half to two volts less. That's actually 12 and a half volts going in. And you, you've now got the losses here. And if I continue to turn it down, it just goes down appropriately and there's no stability whatsoever. 10 volt, 10.9 volts going in, 9.5. So you've lost just a fraction over a volt and a bit. We're just going to check the consistency of these modules as I've got another one which I haven't actually powered up yet so I don't know if it's going to work let's hope so and that's with 30 volts exactly going in and we've got 11.9 so we'll see what comes out of the other module with the same load and the same input but we're on the second sample now and it's as near as damn it the same. Everything seems to work. The output voltage is a fraction higher, but certainly 
and it looks like they both come out slightly less than 12 volts. So if you're looking for something to reduce the voltage from your main power supply down to a sensible level, 12 volts, now these modules are available in all sorts of voltages and currents. Um, almost as many as you can imagine and they come or I purchased these from a, a most unlikely sounding name I'll have to look it up hang on 1688 day promotion shop I don't know who thought of that name but that's where it came from but saying that there are countless companies on that's from AliExpress by the way I'm not endorsing this particular company because I paid for these with my own money. I don't get any kickback or promotion. But I'm delighted to say that these seem to be well made. They don't get hot. And I've had this one running now on the load for about four hours. It hasn't gone bang. That doesn't mean it won't go bang tomorrow. But with all these things from overseas, you know you take your your chances with them. I can't fault the way it looks and the way it's built and the way it performs. It's perfect. You could always argue that you can just get a regulator and do the same job. Well of course you can but the advantage of this is volts goes in there and the voltage you want comes out there. There's no printed circuit boards to mess with. You haven't got a you don't even have to mount it. You could always just drop this into the chassis or even dob a little bit of uh, glue or double-sided te uh, tape and that will be fine. A further look at some of the Class D modules and I've also got a double Class D module which is reputedly has 600 watts per channel. Of course it does. We will soon debunk that rating, I'm sure. Thank you for watching. Do press like because I'm, I'm told it helps. Any help I can get on my channel is required. So thank you. Bye bye for now.